after some of these things with the they had these temples I won't get too much into it temples of sacrifice temple beauty where they used what they called the two the firestone where they used this the spiritual powers to cleanse the body of the feathers to cleanse the body of the hooves to cleanse the body of the paws that we had so you were getting less and less of things and that's when the Atlanteans started going out and trying to get more slaves, trying to get more people to do their work. So it's interesting, you have, even in this country, you have slavery, where we enslave people. He gets, before, there were uh, three actual sinkings of Atlantis. He says before they sunk, there were people who went uh, to Egypt, who went to the Pyrenees, who came to the United States. He says the Iroquois Indians were descendants of Atlantis. And he says, not only were they descendants of Atlantis, he says, they were the descendants of the sons of Bilio, he were, where they were not the good guys. And he says, now you have the settlers come, and, he, and I try and think of this on a grand cosmic scheme, he's saying that the settlers were actually the sons and daughters of the law of war. These were the good guys. So now you have the good guys getting mixed up with the bad guys. Now you see how we treated the Indians, you know, how we did to them. On a certain level, it's almost karmic justice that's coming back. You see, only we don't see it. Oh, those poor Indians, look what we did to them. And we shouldn't have done it to them. I, you know, I'm not saying that what we did was right. All I'm saying is that it's bigger than you see. You don't see the whole picture. See, you don't, you, we really don't understand why what happens happens. Oh, poor me, and oh, poor them, and all oh, this and that. But on a certain level, uh, what goes around comes around. No opinion is necessary. You know, you know, it's like you can talk about the poor Indians, and you don't know the whole story. You have this opinion about it. Well, you see part, you see the tail of the elephant. You don't see the whole elephant. But you're supposed mm -hmm. to treat them with compassion. Right? Absolutely. You're supposed to treat everybody with compassion. You're supposed to treat everybody with kindness. You're supposed to love and forgive. That's the only way we get beyond that. But I'm just saying that on a big picture, what's happening is not by accident. You see, uh, if everybody was conscious, then that wouldn't happen. If the Indians were conscious and the settlers were conscious, that whole interchange wouldn't have taken place. But we all act unconsciously. We all act in sleep. So if we're acting unconsciously, this is what's in us. We're coming in with our own karma. They've got their karma, I've got my karma, and now we're meeting. So we meet head on. And, uh, and that's what you have to take place. Ideally, absolutely. You want to get into Buddhism, have compassion for every living creature. Um, yes. Yeah, I just have a question. So the, the sons of the law of one came down to not by example, uh, to by example, not by marriage or, or consummation, change the sons of Belial's thought energy forms to raise their energy? Is that yeah, what they, they came they for? they tried to help to remind them that they were spirits. That they were spirits, and but they failed. Was, they failed because they got sucked in the same way. You know what? Mm. She's not bad looking. I like that. And uh, mm -hmm. we go again, right? Mm -hmm. You know? And, and the circle starts again. And we get entrapped again. And I've got to meet you again. And so you say, so I had a lady in a workshop two weeks, four weeks ago. She said to me, I don't want to come back anymore. She says, what do I have to do? <laughs> she was an old lady. I mean, it sounds funny, but she was dead serious. But it doesn't work like that. You see? It doesn't work like that. I wish it was that easy. And at the end of the game is that there is no end game. You see, you think, oh, okay, I'm going to be, I'll become Jesus Christ and that's it. But even that's not it. You, you want to think that that's it. Okay, I, I'll grab the, the brass ring and I won. But it, there is no end. The way there is no beginning, there is no end. But we, we, that's what you think. Oh, yeah, okay, I'll lead, I'll lead a perfect life and I won't have to come back here again. But it's bigger than that. You're, you're taking in eternity, you're taking infinity, and you're bringing it down onto this crummy level that we're at. So that you think, oh, yeah, okay, if I do this, then I'm saved. And I'm going to be one of the 144,000 that are saved. Everybody else is going to go to hell. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, I mean, you, you laugh, but that's what they believe. You guys see? Uh, you, you get into these crazy beliefs, but... That's the Mormons, right? 
Well, biblically, depending on what denomination you are, everybody thinks they're, they're the ones that are going to be saved. If you're a Mormon, you think you're the one that's going to be saved. The Mormons came up with 144. It's biblically, it's in there. Oh, okay. and yeah. It's in Revelations. Uh, it's so, like... As Greg Casey said, that Israel means seeker. Exactly. And the people in Israel, they think they're chosen, they are putting you know, themselves right. over it's everybody. Mm -hmm. But it's not. And it's not. Yeah, he's very clear that Israel is for, for everybody, for seekers of the truth. That's right. But you get into what he does get into. It's interesting. He talks about Abraham being the father of most of the major religions, whether it's Muslim or whether it's Jewish. So. There was a certain something there that was going on even with the Essenes who were a Jewish sect who held on to that law of one, who held on to the law where it came through them for whatever reason, even though Jesus was every religion that there was.